Hi folks, we've been talking about wave speed and this time we're going to talk about the speed of light. Now light waves travel very very crazy fast, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Um, how fast is that? Well it's 186,000 miles per second. Um, and to give you an idea, if you were going to fly across, around the Earth at the equator, you could do that 7 times in 1 second if you could fly at the speed of light. That's crazy fast. That is really, really crazy fast. Um, the symbol often used for the speed of light is lowercase c, uh, if it's from an old Greek word for swiftness. Um, but the speed of light is not just the speed of visible light, it's also the speed of all of the ele different electromagnetic waves. So this is the speed of radio waves, everything AM, FM, your cell phone, um, ham radio, amateur radio, uh, shortwave radio, marine radio, all of those. Um, infrared radiation having to do with heat, ultraviolet which gives you a sunburn and suntan, x-rays used in imaging, and gamma radiation used to treat uh, cancer. So all of these travel at this speed and as far as we know at this moment in our understanding of physics, this is the fastest thing uh, we know of. Uh, we know nothing that can travel faster than light within space itself. And that was one of the many wonderful dis uh, discoveries of Albert Einstein. We're going to talk about size, and I want you walking out of this little lecture understanding that all of these waves have size, and the size has a lot to do with their properties and what we can use different waves for. So. We'll begin with FM radio. FM radio stands for frequency modulation. Um, this is what this means. When you have a radio station, it is given a carrier wave. And the carrier wave is what you tune into on your FM radio dial. They add to it a signal, and the signal is the music and the announcer's voice, and they marry these two together by modulating or changing the frequency. So that sometimes the frequency is intense, and sometimes the frequency is not. And these changes um, go through the air, and then your radio tuner separates these out again. But what is the size of an FM radio? Well, FM radio waves are in the megahertz range. So let's keep the numbers pretty simple. Um, I'm going to pick 100 on the FM dial. Why? Because it's a nice round number and it's easy to calculate. So velocity of a wave is frequency times wavelength. So the wavelength is going to be equal to the velocity Ah, I got weird funny sing signals going there. Velocity is going to, what did I just say? I don't know, let's try again. Uh, wavelength is going to be velocity divided by frequency. All electromagnetic waves are going to travel at the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the frequency, if for an 100 megahertz signal, is 100. Mega is 10 to the 6th and hertz. Now if you remember, 1 hertz is equal to 1 per second, and uh, that per means that we just added something, waves, cycles, vibrations on the top, um, and that's one of the reasons we use hertz, because the per seconds sound funny. If you do the division, I end up with a wavelength somewhere around 3 meters. So how big is 3 meters? Well, a meter is a little bit bigger than a yard, so we're talking about 3 yards. Um, I personally am a little, oh, a little over 1.5 meters tall, so it's about two not, you know, medium-sized human beings laid end to end is one FM radio wave. So that's not terribly large. But because of the fact that they are 6 to 12 feet long, FM radio waves can fit into small spaces. They actually can get in through windows and they have relatively good sound quality. And that's why we broadcast. People broadcast uh, TV sound is often broadcast on FM and we can get decent quality music on FM. Now I want to contrast that with AM radio. AM radio stands for amplitude modulation and as you know amplitude is the the height 
of a wave. So again, there is a carrier that is assigned to the radio station by the Federal Communication Commission. There is the signal, which is the voice or the music of the announcer. And the broadcast studio marries these two together by changing the amplitude or height of the wave. That's an amplitude modulated signal. An, F, an AM radio broadcast is going to be in the kilohertz part of the radio spectrum. So let's find the size of one AM radio wave. Velocity is frequency times wavelength. Wavelength is going to be velocity divided by frequency. All of these travel at the speed of light. And the frequency, again, let's keep it simple. I want to keep the math nice. Let's talk about 100 AM is kilohertz. So times 10 to the third, kilo is times 10 to the third, hertz. And when I do the division, I end up with 300 meters. Yeah, that's what the number says, 300 meters. Now, 300 meters is about the same as 300 yards. Now, one of the things you and I are familiar with that's about 100 yards long is a football field. So we're talking about one wave, one crest, one trot, excuse me, <coughs> that is as long as three football fields back to back to back. AM radio waves are big, they're monstrous, they're huge. And because of this size, there's a whole bunch of wacky things AM radio waves cannot do. Um, if you've ever been in a metal pole shed and you're trying to listen to an AM football game or basketball game or something, very often they can't get in unless you've got the big massive doors open because the metal acts like a mirror and the AM radio waves are going to bounce off. They just can't fit in unless you have a big door open. Um, if you are ever traveling down a highway and you're going underneath one of these steel reinforced concrete overpasses, tune in to AM radio. Depending upon where the station is that you're listening to it, sometimes when you drive under these overpasses, the radio signal will absolutely just go out every time you go underneath an overpass. And that's because the waves are too big to fit under here. I went to college a long time ago, and I want you to feel very, very sorry for me. When I went to college, all I had was AM radio. That's all I had back in my green pacer. Yes, an AMC pacer I drove to college. And I had to park in a parking garage and when I was tuned into AM radio and I'd pull in the parking garage, my AM radio always cut out. Why? The radio signals were so big that they would not fit inside of the parking garage. This big building acted like a mirror and these big monster waves just bounced off just like light bounces off of your mirror at home. Crazy stuff. The big idea I want you to get is that waves have size and the size contributes to the properties. Okay, a couple more things about the math that goes with waves. Frequency. Frequency is the number of waves per unit time. Now we talked about frequency back when we did rotation. So this can be waves per second, revolutions per second, vibrations per second. The units are a hertz, but we use these top words, waves, vibrations, as just words. They're non-dimensional units. We put these words here because humans don't like saying per second. It feels funny to our ears. Frequency and period. Frequency is 1 over period, and period is 1 over frequency. We had these equations back when we did rotation, but we're going to see them again as we talk about waves. Um, and let's do a really quick little calculation. Um, middle A on a piano, uh, also known as concert A, has a frequency of 440 hertz. That means that when you hit middle A or concert A on a piano, the string is going to vibrate 440 times per second. Now, what is the period of oscillation? Well, that's going to be 1 over the frequency, or 1 divided by 440 hertz. And if I do the math, that means 0 0.0023 seconds between each unique wave. That is very, very fast. Each one of those little vibrations of that string in your piano. All right, that will get us started, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>